I just so happen to have 60 pounds of my favorite honey. It's time to make an orange blossom traditional meat. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, we're gonna to be making an orange blossom traditional mead. Now, I've done this with other kinds of honey, but specifically, I really like orange blossom honey because of the um, specific notes it gives off, gives off within a mead in general. So, I, like I just said, I have 60 pounds of it here. I just got my new pail in, and I'm excited to use this. This is a different company than I've used before. Um, this is a from Web Restaurant, I think is what it's called, and um, another one of those bulk honey suppliers Go check it out if you want to do that. Um, if you're looking at this and you've never made a traditional mead, I want to walk you through the process. It's pretty simple. Um, we will not finish this mead in this video, but we will at least get it started. So you're going to need a few things. First of all, you need sanitizing water of some sort. This is my distilled water and star sand mixture. I spray everything down before I um, do anything with it so that it's sanitized. You will also need some equipment. You need a hydrometer, which is this thing right here. It helps you measure gravity. Um, you need some kind of tube to put that hydrometer in. You also need something to stir with and an airlock, a, a fermenting vessel. This is a uh, the catalyst fermentation system. I'm using it because I, I have it to use right now um, and it doesn't have anything in it. You can use just a plain old bucket. Like you can use something like this and ferment or a glass carboy. Um, of course need a, a bung or, or an airlock, those things. So uh, I have a scale as well for measuring my honey. Here's my recipe I'm gonna be using today. I have five gallons of water, uh, spring water to be exact. I'm gonna use 15 pounds of honey and I will be using the Lauvin EC1118. And this, uh, I picked this yeast because it keeps the sweetness of honey well, like it, it helps retain that flavor within a mead, within, you know, a traditional mead specifically, and, uh, but still ferments well. So we're gonna be using 10 grams of that. Um, I'm gonna start doing this, it's real simple. I have all my water, all my things. Uh, I might have to do a little extra pouring and stuff in a moment, but we'll get there when we get there. So let's first get started with um, pouring in some water into the mead. Step one, you just need to basically, uh, you need to rehydrate your yeast. So what I'll actually do, give me one moment, I'll uh, get something to rehydrate my yeast. Okay, so I'm gonna pour a little of my water into this cup and we are going to use this to rehydrate my 10 grams of yeast. Rehydrating is basically the process of waking the yeast up, which helps them ferment and reproduce better. Um, so it's important to do that. I'm just gonna pour them straight in. Basically, while we put all this together, the rehydration will happen, then we'll just dump it into the mead. You can um, do this other ways. You can put yeast nutrient and stuff in this process. I am not going to with this one. Now, we're gonna add honey, or sorry, honey, water. I'm gonna put at least three gallons of water into here before we start pouring our honey in. Um, this thing will hold six gallons, and the reason that I'm not pushing, I'm not using six gallons of water is because uh, honey does take up volume. Three pounds of honey equal, oh sorry, 12 pounds of honey equals a gallon. So obviously we're gonna have a little, it's gonna be pretty close. So let me pour my water in, and then we'll start mixing in, uh, weigh out our honey and mix it all in. Okay, we're all mixed up, and uh, as you can see, this thing's very full. It's gonna go to the top, it is at the top. There will probably be a little bit of an issue with um, uh, some foaming maybe coming out of the airlock. However, I wanted to get up to that six gallons because this will go out over time. The catalyst fermentation system has this, um, this mason jar butterfly valve, and I'll show you what it does. Okay, so what this does here is when you open up the butterfly valve, it just releases and this will fill up at the bottom here, like that. And because this is a conical fermenter, um, anything that settles will settle there at the bottom. I can close the butterfly valve and of course, um, you know, take off that, that this container, 
put it back on, do various stuff like that. You don't have to have this thing to firm it with. Like I said, you could do this with just a, a five gallon, six and a half gallon plastic firmature. Your yeast will just settle at the bottom. Same difference. Our yeast have now been sitting like this for a little while. They're rehydrated. We're gonna go and pour it in. And now um, they will start to acclimate in this must. Um, I also need to take a gravity reading, which is why we have our hydrometer. And I actually don't need a tube for this today because uh, I can just set my hydrometer right in there as soon as I find it. Okay, here's our current gravity. You can see, I'm trying to get it to where it's facing you guys, but this is floating at about 1.100. So we are um, basically right at that line. That means that we could get up to about 13.1% ABV. Um, and the yeast that we use, that, that EC1118, actually gets up to 18%. So what's gonna happen with this mead is that the, the yeast are gonna ferment completely out so that this thing's actually dry. Now we have some things we'll do in the future, I'll talk more about it, but basically what I'm gonna end up doing is back sweetening this thing after some extra steps. I'm not done with the video yet, um, but I'll show you real fast kind of what it should look like when it starts fermenting. And so I'll give you the next like 48 hours. And then part two, we'll be racking it, tasting it, seeing what we need, want to do next and talking about the next steps. So I'll be back with some updates real fast about how this is fermenting. And then we'll go from there. Okay, as you can see from the time lapse, it started fermenting. It's about four days of a time lapse, so it'll take a little while longer to ferment. And especially because this is a big mead, it's gonna, um, you know, need that time for the yeast to really reproduce and do their job. So uh, we're gonna be done with this video for now. This is part one. Part two will be out very soon. We'll be doing some tasting in that, and it'll be hopefully done fermenting at that point. Uh, I'm excited to see how this one tastes. I haven't used orange blossom in probably two years. So this is, uh, it's a really nice kind of honey. So I really like it. Um, if you want to check out that video, I don't know if it's out, you know, when you're watching this, but you might be able to find part two or even part three. But I, uh, I hope you will join me for that as well as any other content. I have um, lots of videos um, about mead making, mead mythbusters, questions, a podcast, all this stuff. Uh, this is a very fun thing for me to do and everything you do goes to support the channel. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys hopefully in part two and cheers.